Well, President Donald Trump starts his first school week in the White House today. And after the inaugural speech, the tone has been set. So to go over that, our political psychologist, Dr. Bart Rossi, has come back with us uh, this morning. We appreciate you coming nice in. Nice to be here. Thank you for being here. Now, you described the speech that we heard on Friday afternoon as kind of definitive and stark. So analyze that uh, done by design? I think so. I think it was effective. Although it was kind of dark, he presented the, the, the bad side of America, the negatives. And I think he did that to show that he wants to reach out to middle class, working class people, the folks who supported him or who are quite angry and frustrated. And I think he did a pretty good job of doing that. He did not highlight the positives that are going on in America, and there are quite a few. But he wants to be the boss and he wants to project himself as the authoritarian personality. He certainly did that. We haven't seen that change at all from your analysis throughout the campaign right, and, uh, right up through the speech. So let's go. One of the quotes that maybe stuck out to you was this one here We will bring back our dreams. So, how important is that line, do you think, to him? I think it's great for him, and I think it was a great part of his speech because that reaches the working class, people who are 40, 50,000, all the way maybe up to $100,000. You know, these people have dreams and they're not sure where they're going with their careers, with their life. And that kind of brings back the thinking that, you know, we can go forward and maybe this guy is going to do something for us. Now, you see a set of challenges posed by what the president spoke about in his inaugural address. I think there are a lot of challenges. He said the hour is now. Well, it is. But the hour is for him. Because so far, there's a lot of words. We're going to make America great again. But we don't have any policies. We have basically nothing on health care. We're not sure where the tax breaks are going. Are they going to go all to the wealthy? Or will we have some spread around? Will this be an effective policy with regard to any issue? We don't know that. So he set himself up deliberately, I think, to be the leader and take charge. And that, that's what he did with this speech. You know, as the political psychologist you has to be watching in some amazement over the weekend, this fight with the reporters over the size of the crowd at the inauguration. Right. What's going on here? Well, you know, I, I really didn't like what, what, the, what the White House did on the first day. I mean, the media didn't bring up the issue of crowd size. It was, it was the new White House who basically said, this is the biggest and the greatest and the best inauguration. They didn't have to say that. They could have just said it was a wonderful day. This is great. It was a fine experience. It was wonderful. But then the media responded to the fact that it really wasn't probably the biggest inauguration. You know, I think the White House has to learn that they have to go forward and make sense. The speech made a lot of sense to me in his pitch to people and the working class in America. And I thought that was a good start, even if it was kind of, kind of on the dark side. But those are the voters that essentially got Donald Trump elected that he was speaking to. He was speaking to them. Everybody wearing a red hat in that audience out there. You know, they want something. They want him to be the leader and the boss and make it happen. So he's got to do something with Obamacare and he's got to do something with his policies that reaches out to those folks. If he doesn't, the anger will then go back to him. And I don't think he wants that. No, probably not. Now's the time to get specific. Yes. All right, Dr. Rossi, thanks for your analysis. Always interesting. Uh, Wing News this morning is coming right back. Stay with us.